now we're going to go on and have um, um, Modi on, and I want to, uh, Motivenda, um, Melchizedek, and I know I just butchered that, so I'm going to have her come on here in a second and correct me with the right spelling. I apologize, Moni. But um, she wrote the book, The Edge of the World is an Incredible, The Edge of the World. And this is an incredible book that has its own power to release repressed emotion in the victims of all kinds of abuse and help facilitate in their healing in pretty much the same way that that therapy accesses embedded trauma. And the ability of this work to support self-healing is wondrous. The Edge of the World is only one of the many outstanding compilations authored by this very talented writer and artist. And I'd like to welcome Modi to Heal Yourself Talk Radio. Hello. How are you today? Oh, I'm great, Rebecca. Thank you so much for, for saying And did I you. say your name right? I apologize. I, oh, I yeah. practiced it, and I was so afraid I was going to butcher it. <laughs> oh, how sweet. Um, yeah, I go by Modi. Modi. Um, okay. And, yeah, and then my full name is Madhavinda Melchizedek. So you okay. were pretty darn close. <laughs> cool. That's good to know. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, Maudie for short. Okay. And you, you you wrote the book, The Edge of the World. What made you write this book? Well, um, it's, how would I say this? Um, so the title is actually The Edge of the World, and the subtitle is The Metaphysics of Survival and the Evolution of Humanity. And so I basically, when I, I did really the, bulk of my integration work. Um, I was abused as a kid, and I went through a lot of therapy, and I'm an artist and a writer and a metaphysician, and and as I did that integration work about 20 years ago, I guess it's been now, I happened to chronicle my whole process through writings and and illustrations that actually capture um, in real time my own process of healing those wounds of self-alienation that accompany that kind of trauma. And so I've had this body of work for all these years, and it's like I created that work sort of too soon (laughs) or ahead of time or whatever. And um, so I am really just, this piece is just one of the essays that I wrote. And then um, I just decided to put it in this context, like the issues of, child abuse, any kind of wounds that we endure and incur inside of this world that force us apart from ourselves and how when we actually traverse the the, the healing process and, and undergo that journey, we actually evolve a part of ourselves inside that I don't think we've had before as a species or whatever, and we become capable of really creating a whole new world from my perspective. So I just decided to take some of that earlier work and put it in here and and reveal some of my own process and then illuminate or elucidate kind of what I just described to you there. Now, you talked about a little bit earlier about um, being abused as a child. How did that affect you as a teenager and an adult in the beginning? Excuse me. Well, um... Very uh, extremely, I would say. I came from a, a family of seven daughters and an Irish Catholic family, and, and uh, we were sort of like the perfect little family, seven girls all a year apart. And we had, in my abusive family system, it was very much about you know maintaining an out picture, the out picturing that we were together and healthy and right on target for know, the exemplary family, and I was never capable, I just never, from the day I was born, had the capacity to accept that fate and to mm-hmm. and to carry it forward, that, that legacy, by denying the devastation of that family system, but my family is very strong, and to this day, even after all these years, they have never dealt with any of it, and so I had to, and part of it, part of the, um, the indoctrination was that I was never, you know, it's like my father was very clear, if you ever betray this um, and betray us, you know, and then you basically start to death in the darkness on the streets, 
you know. So I became an alcoholic and lived, you know, I mean, I, I did end up on Skid Row at, at that point. By the time I was in my 20s, well, I quit college. And these were all ways that I just tr- broke away from that system because all my sisters are, you know, very, they all have master's degrees and are married to MIT graduate husbands and have $500,000 houses and all that. And so part of me breaking out was having to break out of all of those things as well because they were all tied together in the indoctrination process. And so I, you know, I kind of ended up at the bottom of the world. And then I got sober back then, so it was like 25 years ago, and just started on a path. I was lucky because at that time it was when that whole movement of integration and adult children of alcoholics, this sort of um, secondary recovery movements were um, cropping up, and I was living in Venice Beach at the time, which was sort of the cutting edge of that. And so, luckily, right when I got sober, I was able to begin to heal and had support for that kind of deep integrated integration work. Um, and but, when you started healing, what was your first step? I mean, besides, because I, I talked to other survivors of abuse, whether it be physical or verbal or even emotional abuse. And I'm always um, interested in what their first realization was and what their first step was to move out of that situation. Yeah, I think it, I do think it's very personal. It's sort of like having a bottom, you know. For me, it had to do with just reaching a bottom with alcoholism at that time. And, you know, I used as most abuse survivors, anybody who's running from the truth and having to, maintain a, an experience of self-alienation, meaning, you know, where you're living inside of your own life, but you're not allowed to know the truth of your own existence mm-hmm. and what you've lived through and survived. I had to inebriate myself to do that. And so once I stopped drinking, my my memories, my devastation just came flooding into my world. And around that time, too, my father died a couple of years into and for me, it was just really putting down alcohol because that had been how I had coped and and sort of blurred my history. I mean, during college and stuff, I would just go out to get drunk every single night and and be sexually promiscuous and things like that because I I was just reenacting that childhood stuff. Um, so for me, it was that it was starting into it was the process of. And, and actually, at that time, I did not have the self-worth to choose a path of health for myself. Mm-hmm. And I got sober just because I met somebody who was sober, and then I wanted him to like me and stay with me. <laughs> so I started mm-hmm. to get sober, too. Mm-hmm. And then after being sober for a while, I got my own footing and, and you know, decided to take that path for myself. It had to have been really hard to break out of what you'd known pretty much for your entire life. Did you ever feel like um, when you started breaking away that the fear, uh, were you doing the right thing? Were you overreacting? And I'm just trying to think of all the emotions that would come at that point in somebody's life, you know, when they're trying to break away from something that they're used to all the time. What was the the main emotion? Because... I know with something like that, there's a million and one. What was the main emotion that you uh, came across when you first started on your journey to uh, where you are today? Well, I would say the time, really, for me in a lot of ways, it goes back to being a little child and never accepting that fate. And I, I always knew I was going to get out of there and I was going to find a way into another world where that was not acceptable to do to a child and and so for me I had a sort of a that going for me I think just as a soul I came in to this life very powerfully um, integrated on that kind of a level like I never went into that I never experienced that kind of abuse and thought this is okay I always thought I'm going to get out of here I'm going to find a way out of this and and um, but at the same time 